today we're talking about the best commons and uncommons in Phyrexia all will be one because when you start drafting the set on release weekend and your pack one rare is Solus Jailer or Mirren Safe House or Yawgmoth Forbid encroaching Mycosynth, you need a backup plan. These are the best of the best in each color, let's jump right in with white uncommons. Ossification is the best white uncommon, it really isn't very close. Incredibly cheap, enchants a basic land which you'll always have, and it hits both creatures and planeswalkers. And while it can be removed with enchantment destruction, I wouldn't count on every single person having canker bloom or even main decking enchantment destruction. Top tier removal spell, easy to cast, not much more to say than this. The second best uncommon is Annex Sentry. I'll admit 3 mana for a 1-4 isn't brilliant, but it comes with Toxic and most importantly a glass casket attached that also grabs artifacts. There are plenty of powerful creatures at 3 mana and under, and tokens galore as well. Annex Sentry nets you one creature on your opponent while sticking a confident blocker that can get in with some poison counters against an empty board. It's useful in all decks that run white. The best white common is Planar Disruption. It has an absurdly large net, grabbing any artifact, creature, or planeswalker you don't like and locking it down forever. No attacking, no blocking, no activating abilities, this is oppressive as anything. Do not compare it to pacifism, because it's a lot better than pacifism. The reason I sound so aggressive right now is there is this narrative that these types of cards aren't that great, I fight against that narrative. Planar Disruption is an auto-include removal spell, especially in a set with absurdly powerful walkers and a potentially fast meta, you should play this card. The next best common is a tie. Basilica Shepherd is strong. 5 mana for 5 power and toughness across 3 creatures including a 3-3 flyer is good no matter what you put it in, and you get some toxic to boot. This is a pure value play. Don't be afraid of the 5 mana, it's worth the cost. And the only white decks that wouldn't be able to use this are the ones that are splashing white and can't consistently get double white. Otherwise, this goes into your white deck, even the aggressive ones, it's just too much value not to play. The other white common I have to mention is Charge of the Mites. It's a removal spell. Conditional, sure, but it's damage-based removal on white and can hit Planeswalkers. And if you can't make that happen, you get two mites. The modal nature of this card gives it additional value thanks to the flexibility and makes it worth including in basically all white decks. You can't argue with removal that is also versatile. The best blue uncommon for limited is Tamiyo's Immobilizer. It's not a flashy card, but anyone who remembers Tumble Magnet knows why this is on the list. Phyrexia All Will Be One is full of powerful creatures, and you're not always going to have an answer. Being able to lock down a dangerous threat for four turns is long enough to win the entire game sometimes, and that doesn't even bring proliferation to the equation. But without relying on that mechanic, it's still really strong. It isn't technically removal, but for all intents and purposes, it can function that way a lot of the time, and I guarantee drafting this will do a ton of work for you. It is phenomenally annoying and hard to deal with. The next best blue uncommon is Serum Snare. In limited, I view these instant speed on summons as time walks against expensive threats. Your opponent pays 4 or 5 or 6 mana for a giant creature, you spend 2 mana at instant speed to double their mana investment and delay their threat. In any blue deck, you will find this type of effect valuable, even more so in ones that care about proliferation, but even without that, it's top tier disruption. Before we move on to commons, one small nod to Unctus's Retrofitter, it isn't amazing by itself, which is why it isn't technically listed here, but with any single artifact at all, it becomes one of the best uncommons in the set. Again, it's not a general list, but so powerful, I felt like I had to mention it. Blue commons are pretty decent this time around with a lot to work with, but the best of them all is Mesmerizing Doze. Not only does it tap the creature down you don't like and prevent it from untapping forever, it also proliferates for you, basically a free proliferate on something that usually costs 3 mana anyways. Blue is all about disruption and stalling the game. Mesmerizing Dose is premium removal and should go into every single blue deck in the format you want this card. The next best blue common is Malkator's Watcher, and I will go blue in the face until I tell everyone on the planet. 2 mana for a 1-1 one, one flyer that can ping your opponent for 1 each turn while also staying back to block a giant threat at some point in addition to replacing itself when it dies, it's just, it's so good. This is so much value, you have no idea. Palace Familiar was not a bad card and this isn't either and it's better than the familiar. Don't let being a 1-1 one, one cloud your judgment, this does everything you could feasibly want it to, many will underestimate this and they really shouldn't. I do feel the need to mention Quicksilver Fisher. I don't think it's as good as the Watcher, but it's a strong generalist and should be mentioned. It fits into every blue deck as a big body in the air and comes with a loot effect. With blue, especially in this set, you want each of your cards to individually bring a lot of value and the Fisher does that. You're always going to want this towards the top of your curve. It's difficult for this to not do work for you. The best black uncommon, and maybe the best uncommon or common in the entire set is Drown and Icker. If you see this card in your pack and your rare isn't very good, Drown and Icker is a solid choice. Cheap, easy to cast removal that gets around indestructible, and it proliferates. While there are other good black uncommons, this is better than any of them by a mile. 
The second best black on common is a very close fight, but I believe it's Nimrazer Paladin. A 4-4 with Toxic 2 is a real beating and will force your opponents to make some difficult choices, but beyond that, it recurs a creature from your yard for free on entry to the battlefield that's huge. It isn't exactly like drawing a card, but it is card advantage. In a format where removal will be at a premium, being able to bring back resources is a big deal. It's the combination of this recursion and the giant body with Toxic that makes this card such a threat in any black deck. I do need to give special mention to Shieldred's Edict, also a fantastic black uncommon and virtually tied with the Paladin powerwise. Being able to choose specifically what you want your opponent to sacrifice means you can dodge might tokens easily. The modes on this are strong, it's easy to cast, and it's instant speed. Honestly, all three of the black uncommons I talked about are first pick worthy, they're all very good in all black decks. The best black common is actually two black commons, Annihilating Glare and Anoint with Affliction. The Glare has flexibility in its targeting, but a conditionally high cost. Anoint has a cheap cost and instant speed, but a smaller target without corrupted. I'm mentioning them both together because in my eyes they are virtually tied in value. Different playstyles or decks might lead you to prefer one over the other, but both are amazing in early picks and limited. If you do find yourself staring at both of these, pick Anoint if you're in white, Glare if you're in red, or really just either, because again, virtually identical until you decide on a strategy. Testament Bearer is one of my pet cards, so I have to mention it. It goes into everything and will 99% of the time get you serious value thanks to its stat line. It can't be chumped by a might token, it threatens serious damage every single turn, or can sit back and block giant creatures, taking them down and letting you card filter at the same time. You will almost always get the better end of the deal when this dies. It's always a safe inclusion in any black limited deck, I guarantee it. Rebel Salvo is the best red and common in the set for limited, hands down, this card is a house. 3 mana for an instant speed, 5 damage to a creature or a planeswalker, and it loses indestructible, and the spell has affinity for equipment even when it's already competitively costed. This thing's outrageous. First pick worthy for sure, it even takes down all the Phyrexian gods besides the big butt one. There are only a handful of cards in the set this doesn't kill. In contention for best and common in the entire set, it's totally broken beyond reason. The next best uncommon is probably Hexgold Halberd for a couple reasons. First, it's a 2 mana 2-2 two -two with First Strike and Trample, which is very good in a format with a lot of high impact early drops. First Strike is basically king. But what puts it a little over the top is that re-equip cost. After your 2-2 two -two is dead, equipping this for only 3 mana is aggressive considering it gives 2 combat relevant keywords. There are a number of equipment in this set that don't have much use once its rebel is dead, but the Halberd keeps going for a fair cost. This makes every creature a threat at a decent price. I'd like to mention Resistance Skywarden as well. I don't think it's as good as the Halberd, and being double red means you need a red deck to run it reliably, but a 5-5 with Menace and Reach for 5 mana is an early pick, and there are packs you'll have where there will be nothing better than this, and don't feel bad about that. Two combat relevant keywords on a 5 mana 5-5 five five is going to be very good in this format, especially since it can block almost everything in the air. Solid third red and common right here. Volt Charge is the best red common, and this shouldn't really come as a surprise to anyone that's been good since New Phyrexia. 3 mana for 3 damage and instant speed is just fine and limited, and this one proliferates, which gives a lot of value in red specifically thanks to how many oil counters are flying around. This goes in every red deck and will likely be one of the first commons taken out of every pack forever. The next best red common is Hexgold Slash, 2 damage to a creature for a minimal cost at instant speed, and sometimes you get to dome a bigger toxic creature, and since toxic exists across the other 4 colors, you'll be casting this for 4 damage more often than you might think. Regardless, cheap, efficient damage, solid removal, you really can't go wrong here. The third best common is a tie. The first candidate is Molten Rebuke. It is expensive and it is sorcery speed, but you're killing a creature or a planeswalker you don't like, and sometimes you get a sweet two for one. In each pod, there should be an equipment player or at least someone utilizing equipment in some way. If that person isn't you, it's someone else. But even without that, five damage is a large amount of damage, and being able to take out most creatures and most planeswalkers in the set could give you the reach you need to win the game. Removal, even at this cost, is important. The second candidate for the third best red common is Furnace Strider. Since it can give itself haste with its oil counters, dropping it as a 4-5 that swings in right away puts a lot of pressure on your opponent. It wouldn't be mentioned here if it couldn't enable itself. That is a lot of its value as an early pick, especially if you don't have a strategy chosen yet. These cards need to be good as individual cards, and the Strider brings a lot of damage and future potential damage with it. It's unassuming, but it's quite strong. Green uncommons are pretty deep, there are a lot of good ones, but the best one is definitely Venomous Brutalizer. 4-4 four, for four, 4 with Toxic 3 is massive. Toxic 3 is such a huge amount of poison to be dealing each hit from something with this big of a body, and to top it all off, if you play this a bit later in the game you get to Proliferate. It has a lot of value on turn 4 and a different kind of value entering on turn 6. Proliferate trigger aside, whenever this is on the battlefield your opponent has to be paying attention to it. They can't open themselves up to taking 3 poison at a time and 4 damage from a single creature, so basically you're forcing them to keep 
keep back a suitable blocker. This is the best green on common because the pressure it applies to the table is truly impressive. The second best green on common is Infectious Bite. Cheap, instant speed removal spell, don't even have to fight the target, and your opponent gets a poison counter for free. There's a lot of value in this little card. It's a great way to get the first poison counter on to start proliferating, and I really can't get past how this is only two mana and instant speed, and it isn't a fight spell, and it gives a poison counter. It's really impressive. Unlike some of the other colors, greens on commons are unusually powerful as generally good cards that don't necessarily need help to be strong. In addition to the Brutalizer and the Bite, the following cards are all early pack picks. Armored Scrap Gorger, Canker Bloom, Evolving Adaptive, Incubation Sack, and Viral Spawning. Each of these has enough power on its own to warrant a relatively early pack pick. My favorite among these are Armored Scrap Gorger and Incubation Sack, but they all carry their own weight and then some. There are two green commons that are head and shoulders above the rest. The first is Ruthless Predation. Cheap cost, fight cards, stuff we've seen before, but this one gives plus one plus two before the fight, allowing your creature to survive fights that might not normally survive. Sorcery speed isn't really a big deal here, and if you do kill their only blocker, your creature has plus one to its power to swing in with. Easy include in any green deck. The second amazing green common is Contagious Vorak. The choice between card filtering and proliferate is difficult to pass up, especially on a respectable 3-3 body for only 3 mana. Being able to see the cards first and decide if you want to keep any land you see before choosing whether or not to take land or proliferate, it's just, it's so nice. Having full control over the trigger lets you choose exactly what you want to do. It's very hard to be disappointed in this card. You either get a land you want, or you get to proliferate if you blank, and neither of those things are bad, just a solid card all around. The third best green common is probably Lattice Blade Mantis, but it is definitely a tier below Predation and the Vorak. It comes with two built-in activations of its ability, so it'll effectively be a 4 mana 5-4 with Vigilance for a couple turns, which isn't bad at all. And if your pack is absolutely terrible, you could do worse than this as an early pick, but don't gravitate towards something like this pick 1 unless you really are starting at the worst Phyrexia has to offer. There are some colorless cards to consider early in draft as well that I think some are forgetting about. Rib Skiff is strong. It replaces itself in your hand right away, which helps with the 4 mana cost, and Toxic 2 is a lot. It is in Venomous Brutalizer, of course, but even with a crew cost of 3, this is worth going after. Your opponent will have to find a way to deal with this sooner rather than later as a 4-4 four -four with Toxic 2. It has significant board presence and gives you card advantage. Do not ignore this vehicle. Surgical Skull Bomb is crazy. I know your instincts are telling you it's just another little one mana trinket, but I promise you this card is better than you might think. Aether Spell Bomb was absurd, and while this is an Aether Spell Bomb, it draws you a card in addition to disrupting your opponent in a big way. I'm not saying to necessarily first pick this card, of course, but do not let these go late because drafters next to you won't, especially the other blue players. At worst, I would call this card highly above average. At best, it is a common nightmare. Lastly, let's talk about the flagship uncommons just a little bit. All of them are designed to work within their archetype, so I do have the responsibility in telling you that Vivisection Evangelist is straight up broken when Corrupted is turned on. So if you're courageous and want to just dive in with a multicolored card from the very beginning, there's no better multicolored uncommon to do it with than the Evangelist. It's wildly powerful. Not to say that the other flagship cards aren't good because they are, but when you actually make your plan come together, the Evangelist is by far the most oppressive and consistent. Now you should be ready to dominate your local drafts or your drafts on Magic Arena or Magic Online or your basement or wherever the heck you play. Gentle reminder that this guide is only a starting point and a reference for when you're looking for neutral card power. Once you have a strategy in place, things do shift, so keep that in mind. I really hope this helped out, and if it did, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you, and as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.